All right, so when we left off at the end of the last uh, tutorial, the last class, we had just finished off our clean black shape logo, right? So we saved it as an EPS. And I'm going to go ahead and save that to the desktop so I can see it. An EPS is not an Adobe Illustrator file. It is a portable vector file format. The reason we save it as an EPS is because then we can bring it into Photoshop. So now if I open Photoshop, notice I'm not opening my EPS in Photoshop because that would force me to, to rasterize it, to turn it into a pixel-based image. And I don't want it to be a pixel-based image. Huh. Let's see. So the technique we need to learn, and this is why we cover compositing first, is that we need to bring in our EPS vector, which is on our desktop now. There it is. We need to bring it in as a smart object into Photoshop. And the only way to do that and to keep it as a smart object from the beginning is to say file new. Create a new Photoshop file that's the size you want. And so I'm going to stick with my standards. It looks like I lost all my defaults. So I'm going to say Carl assignment six black logo A, uh, project <laughs> and then how do I what do I want it to print now because it's a vector I can make it print any size I want so for my portfolio I want it to be measured in inches and I want it to be roughly 8 by 10 inches um, I like to even show my more horizontal logos in a portrait format for my portfolio so I will do that but you can choose your own orientation and then the resolution is going to be our standard lab resolution which is 50 pixels per inch above professional standard so it's 350 I want it to be RGB color that is important because of the coloring options we'll have and I want the background to be white so I set up a standard letter size and now what I do I have the background layer is white I'm going to drag and drop in my EPS and it will center automatically and it will, just like when you're compositing, if I hit return, it will place it. And now it has been rasterized really cleanly, as cleanly as it can be, into that 350 pixels per inch, 8 by 10 size. But the difference is, it's a smart object. So if I decide to change its size, this is why vectors are so versatile, to all of a sudden being 30 inches by almost 40 inches by 350, Increasing the memory more than 10 times. Because that's still a smart object, now my vector will just be even cleaner because it will re output itself in that new native resolution. And that's why we want to keep our, our vector files as EPS smart objects within Photoshop. So now look, it's even cleaner. I have to zoom in a lot more to see the, the curve. Now that's, that's crazy size. That's like full poster size, full sheet printing size. So I'm going to keep it at 8 by 10. And at this point, of course, I can use my move tool and I can arrange it, maybe put it a little bit uh, higher than center. But that looks pretty good. That might be how I would print this for the midterm. You know, and, and the black here would be where the mat is. So that, that kind of says, okay, that's my logo. Now we save that. First we save it as a PSD file for us. That keeps the, the smart layer in there. I'm going to save it to the desktop. Then in order to be able to upload it to PhotoBucket, I'll show you how I, how I save it. I'm going to um, save it not as a JPEG. I could save it as a JPEG, right? But this is like a sticker. This is a logo that should be free floating. And so I'm going to turn off the background and save it as a PNG. Now here's the problem. The first problem, this is the most basic way to do it. But if I save it as a PNG and all it is is a black logo, black shapes cut out, which is ideal, most versatile. If it shows up, let's look at that PNG. If it shows up on a black background instead of a gray background, are you going to see it at all? 
No. So what we can do, and that's the same, like you couldn't print this image on a black t-shirt and have it be visible. So we're going to create an offset really quickly. And we're going to do that to our smart, smart object within Photoshop. It's incredibly easy. We've done it before. So we just double click on our EPS and we're going to add a stroke. It's just like the strokes in Illustrator, except now it's, it's rendered in Photoshop off of our EPS. I'm going to make the color of the stroke pure white to make sure I go to only web colors and click on the white. And then I'm going to make it positioned on the outside of my image, and I'm going to push it to what I think is a reasonable size, proportionally. Now this is what I do to, to see it, because you can't really see it that well on the checkerboard. You can't see it at all, at all in the white background. So just like we did um, with some earlier projects, I'm going to make a duplicate of the background and fill it with middle gray. Edit, fill, 50% gray. Then I'm going to make a duplicate of that, and I'm going to say edit, fill, with black. Now if your logo solution can appear and be visible on all three backgrounds, then it's truly versatile. So if I'm saving the PNG to upload, what's the most versatile PNG? It's the one with the stroke around it, right? All right, so students ask, why is the, um, the gray of the, the EPS, which was black in Illustrator, why does it look gray in Photoshop? That's because the Photoshop is making colors with RGB, red, green, blue lights, whereas vector files are always default coded, and I want to keep the defaults, to express themselves as CMYK, what can be printed with cyan, magenta, black, white. This is just 100% black ink, and that's how the computer codes it, whereas this is the absence of all light. <laughs> so RGB can be darker than CMYK can be. And honestly, if you were to print a t-shirt with black ink on a black t-shirt, it would look like this. It would be this faint gray because ink is not as strong as um, a colored black that uses color to make the black. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to turn on that effect, that stroke. I can play with its width, but I think that's effective. And I'm going to turn off the background so it's a floating sticker now with a little white rim around it and save that as my PNG to upload. You only need to upload one black logo. So I would recommend putting an offset. But we're going to use those effects um, more to do things like emboss and do drop shadows. And you'll, you'll see how versatile they really are. So now I go to my assignment. It's number six. I'm going to upload mine to instructor demos. And I am going to take my PNG that I just saved, upload it, and there it is. Now when we view it, you'll barely see the white outline, but if I view it in the slideshow, make sure it's a PNG. But when I view it in the slideshow, it will be really clear why I need it, right? I need that white outline so it shows up. Otherwise, it wouldn't. It would look like this one. <laughs> All right. So that's how you submit your, your black logo. I'm going to go ahead and submit my sketch as well. And now all that's left is to color our logo. And you'll see some different options. And we're going to play with coloring in Illustrator and coloring within Photoshop. But we might as well, we're in Photoshop already, we might as well start there. And then the way you're going to list these, title them, is you're simply going to say, uh, I should probably edit or crop this. I'll do that in a second. But SP18. Ah. 
your name and then one for your sketch, SP18 and two for your black logo, and then your color one will be three. All right, so now we're in Photoshop. We have our black logo here. We already have background set up. It's 350 pixels per inch at eight by 10 inches. Go ahead and make a duplicate of your smart layer and you'll get another smart layer still rendered from your EPS vector. But now I'm gonna turn off the background one and I'm gonna play with more effects, maybe on a gray background. So click on effects. Now let's add a color overlay. Because it's water, why don't I pick a blue color? And I kind of like doing the web-only colors just to limit it in the beginning. Let's try an opacity of 100, and let's try normal mode, right? So now it's just solid blue. That works okay. It's about water. Okay, now what if I do a gradient overlay, turn off the color just for now, because I can always turn it back on with the check mark. And with this gradient overlay, I want it to be normal, and I want it to be linear, and I want it to be a regular black to white transition, and I want its opacity to be 100%. Now I get to set the angle, and honestly that angle is pretty good because it's like the white water coming and crashing down on the swimmer, or it's like the eye kind of squinting towards the middle, but I can play with different angles. I can play with different scales, like how severe is it? That's a little bit nicer. Okay, now if I put the color overlay on top of it, because it's at 100% opacity at normal mode, I can't see any of the gradient. But what if I take the opacity of the color down a little bit? So this is just like playing with layers. So now I can adjust the gradient over the color. And if I like, I can just make a color gradient instead of a black and white gradient. You know, and do something crazy like that, depending on what you want. Now I might do black to white, but instead of black, maybe I'll pick a really dark blue. And maybe if I don't want to stick with web colors, can make it a really custom kind of midnight blue as part of the gradient. And with instead of the white, I could choose something that's just really subtly yellow. So we get kind of those slight greens in there. Then I can play with the scale again. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. And you see now the blue and the gray. That, that actually looks kind of cool. It's very severe with very minimal color. And I can decide how much of this color overlay I want. That's 30%. Maybe I just want about 23%. Oh, yeah, that looks good. That's my, my Angry Elemental Surf brand. Good to go. So what's great about doing this is it's all under effects right on that black cutout EPS, but it will treat the whole thing the same. So the only limit to coloring within Photoshop this way, even though it keeps it to the smart object, is that you can't color individual parts of the logo with different colors without controlling the gradients in very particular ways. There are other effects we could play with as well. You can play with a drop shadow, which is very, very popular. I like multiply mode. You set the angle, you set the spread of it, just like a light source. And you set how opaque it is, how dark it is, and what angle it, it's set at. I'm gonna match the angle of the water. Keep that momentum going, this dynamic logo. And what's great about a drop shadow, because it's multiply, it's gonna work on the white background as well. And now all of a sudden, I can see the white stroke even on a white background, whereas without the drop shadow, I can't.
another 